I think science really has, we should share our insight with um, the, the general public visually. And I chose two things to talk about. One is why nothing happens, which gives physicists enormous pleasure when nothing actually happens. Um, that is when there's a conservation law. N nothing happening at all is extremely exciting. Um, and then talk about why anything happens at all. But since my 15 minutes, there's only two minutes to run, you'll have to imagine what I was going to say. Because um, energy is conserved, what energy crisis? Then I was going to talk about symmetry. Um, and then I was going to come back to the point I made a little time ago. What is the total energy of the universe? Um, there is the universe, a little bit of it anyway. Um, and obviously, the God had a lot to do on that first day um, because of E equals mc squared. Take all the mass and so on, multiply it by c squared. You get something big. And you also got all the sort of radiant energy as well. So, But scientists, being circumspect folk, also realize that there's gravitational attraction. And gravitational attraction lowers the total energy. And the thought is at the moment seems to be moving towards if you include dark energy and other fantasies and so on that the lowering of energy due to gravitational attraction exactly cancels so instead of God having to do a great deal on day one um, or day zero as I suppose it was um, in fact he had to do absolutely nothing at all uh, because there is no energy in the universe and that Zero energy is with us now, although it doesn't look like that. So there's God's job on day one. Why anything happens? Can I have two minutes? Um, <laughs> why anything happens is, um, of course, the second law of thermodynamics, which was C.P. Snow, another chemist, C.P. Snow's um, uh, litmus test of scientific literacy that saying that not knowing the second law of thermodynamics is not like not knowing, never having read a, a play by Shakespeare. Totally meaningless analogy these days, of course. <laughs> um, but uh, the second law is held. I'm sure that Snow didn't understand the second law either. Um, but all it says, of course, is that things get worse. Um, and. In other words, and I think it's such a, I, when I start my lectures to my erstwhile undergraduates at Oxford, I would say, having bored them with the first law, when I get to the second law, I say something like, no other law of science has contributed more to the liberation of the human spirit. And I think that's true. And um, this is uh, really developing a, a, a a point made yesterday about, this, about, about this, 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 the second law. And I just want to try to show you that you can understand the second law and all its magnificence pictorially. And I think that's the way of conveying scientific insight. This is what you never see. I mean, you never see this. Um, what you do see, of course, is things getting worse. And that is the natural direction of change. And it accounts for just about everything. Um, there, in summary, is um, the second law. Energy and matter tend to disperse in disorder. This could be the fuel of an engine, this, the products of the combustion, including the energy which disperses. You may be able to tap into that process and use it to construct entities. So, providing the world, the world will get worse, but locally there may be abatements of chaos. These might be real bricks being turned into a, a real organized building. But they could also, this could be the processes that take place, the nuclear processes that take place on the sun. So, and the dispersal here, due to the release of energy under, in nuclear fusion, can be captured by the biochemical processes of photosynthesis. And out of carbon dioxide and water and so on, vegetation grows. The vegetation, so well, we have that image, which I think is um, moving towards high kitsch. I warned you that I would end on a note of high kitsch. Um, but this 
could be the vegetation. That is, it could be breakfast. Some breakfasts are more vegetation than others, but this, this could be breakfast. This is the me metabolic processes going on inside us. These could be amino acids, which by the biochemical processes lead to a protein. So as we eat, so we grow. Or it could be the growth of a particular organ. And more fancy, so we've gone really now through this process. And so um, the, but this could also be the random electrical and chemical processes taking place within our brain, which because we eat, we think. And the processes that occur in here, driven by the processes there, could be the kitsch that I mentioned right at the beginning. That is, acts of creativity, acts of understanding, and acts of everything. So I think the second law is something really worthwhile sharing with the general public, because they see that really collapse into chaos can be fantastically constructive. This point uh, came out yesterday a little bit. And finally,